Hey everybody, it's Michelle Caswell with Purely His. Hello gorgeous. <laughs> I just got home. I still have my coat on. Not ready to take it off because it's still cold in my house. So I shall leave it on until I warm up. Can you hear my dog licking water in the background? Yep, just a dog licking water. <laughs> I was hoping that they would be quiet and I'd have my son's dog here also, so uh, sometimes it can get a get to sounding like tap dance around here with their nails like clicking on the floor and anyways, we'll see how this goes. <laughs> I still have my tree up. Who still has their tree up? Am I the only one? I like having it up. Besides, I didn't get to enjoy too much of the uh, Christmas season because I was so like full speed ahead as I was getting ready for the unmasquerade. So I'm leaving it up longer this year. I don't know how long I'm gonna leave it up. Probably another week at least. <laughs> Cause I put it up late this year and yeah, I just kind of like, blew through the holidays. In fact, I was talking to somebody today and she was like, oh, how was your Christmas? I was like, um, it was quick. I basically wanted to get through it because I had this huge event that I was doing. So I didn't really like stop to enjoy it. Plus we have another Christmas this Sunday. So our Christmases are not over yet until Sunday. <laughs> But yeah, and we also cut this tree down off of our property and we cut it down a little late and it still is looking good. So I'm leaving it up. Who else has a Christmas tree up? Do you? Oh good, I'm not the only one. <laughs> Kayla says, I still have mine up. Yay, go team Christmas tree. <laughs> yeah, I have, I literally have no plans to take it down, so we'll just see how I feel. And um, yeah, maybe it'll come down in a week, maybe two weeks. I don't know. But before it's a fire hazard, I'll probably take it down then. Because since my husband's dad was a fireman, he won't let me have a fire hazard in the house. So as long as it stays green and nice like that, it shall stay up. <laughs> So I don't know how many of you were at the Unmasquerade the other night, but it was so awesome. We did a New Year's Eve party at the Jackson County Fairgrounds and it was a clean and sober night and it was decorated beautifully and it was even more decorated nicely when people started showing up in their really nice dresses and their suits and somebody even wore a tux which was awesome and everyone was like wearing their masks and it seemed like the um, photo booth was really um, like a hit that night. There was like people taking pictures and posting them all over Facebook and there was some like really neat moments from that night that like really stuck out to me. And um, I was gonna share a few of those stories cause it's like when you put so much work into it, it's like sometimes you don't stop to like celebrate what did happen. And, and when you're the person who puts on the event, sometimes you can be critical and go, well, this didn't go right or that didn't go right or I wish this had been different or whatever. But, um, we uh we had some really cool moments my dog is literally like licking its bowl its metal bowl and all over the floor hey right rider stop he's like he's trying to get something i don't know what is in his bowl but it's making quite the ruckus anyways um so i tend to when i do events sometimes i can be a little critical of what i could have done better or what could have gone better so instead i really tried to focus on what went right and um there was only a few things that i would have changed but i mean it wasn't like it went bad or anything um but so i had this really cool experience so there was a guy who had come hold on i'm going to take that bowl away from my dog just a minute driving me nuts okay stop no stop Good. Okay, it was this metal bowl like scooting all around my floor and he had his little metal tag that kept like ding, ding, ding. Yeah, wow. 
That was annoying. Okay, so anyways, uh, we had this guy who showed up, and I forgot what his, well, I think I do remember his name, but I won't mention his name. Anyways, he found us through Facebook, and he had gotten clean and sober like several years ago. Um, after having a DUI, he found himself in jail, and from that moment on, he started getting clean and sober and returning to the Lord, and he said that ever since then, New Year's Eve has always been really hard for him because that's like the biggest party night of the year, and... Um, Anyways, he said ever since then he had been looking for a clean and sober party night that he could attend. And then he found us on Facebook and came that night, which was just really awesome. I was like, and this is why we do this. This is so cool. And then I had another lady who reached out to us and I don't know how she heard about us. I don't know if she heard about us through the expo because they were also advertising for us. But she had reached out kind of at the last minute. It was either the day before or the day of asking if we had any free tickets left because she had just completed rehab recently and just had six months clean and was really wanting to come to our event. So it was like, of course we do. So we made that happen and um, got her a ticket. And anyways, it was just really awesome to see how... Um, you know, who ended up coming. It wasn't just purely his people. It was people who, you know, found us through other ways. Um, there was another guy who came up to me and um, I didn't know him at all, but he knew me and he wanted to thank me because I had come and spoke at a group that he was attending. And it was probably about well, it was less than a year ago. It was within this last year. And he wanted to thank me because he said that the night that I came and spoke and shared my testimony, I had said something that was so powerful that like forever changed his mindset and the way he thinks. And he basically said that it was the truth that set him free. And the thing that I had said to that group is that I want to come against the lie that once an addict, always an addict. And it was like, I come against that lie in the name of Jesus. And I started talking about the freedom that Christ really offers that you don't have to be an addict for the rest of your life that you really can get the healing that you need and um, anyways he he had just this big grin on himself on his face and he just wanted to let me know that he was so thankful and it's like I'm so glad like you never know like that was like you know darn near a year ago it was like quite a few months ago and and he said he's been different ever since and I never even met him I didn't lay hands on him he didn't go through one of our groups it was just that the truth of God coming out of my mouth you know changed his life forever and then he got to come to this event and he happens to be dating somebody who is impurely his and so that was just really encouraging and it really just reminded me that you know, we can plant seeds a year ago and either never see the fruit or actually get to see the fruit. And sometimes it takes a while for those seeds that you plant to actually see the harvest. So it was a real blessing to me. I was very encouraged personally, like, okay, I'm doing the right thing. Because sometimes you'll, you do things and, you know, I do a lot of like free speaking engagements and sometimes like, gosh, you know, it, it's kind of hard. Like I didn't get paid for that or, or gosh, I didn't even really see the fruit in that because I haven't gone back to that particular group and spoke again. So gosh, I wonder if it did any good. And so to hear a story come back like that was just like, okay, thank you, Lord. I needed, I needed to hear that because, um, you know, ministry can be hard, you know, you never know, you know, what actually like takes place in people's lives like sometimes you hear it but a lot of times you don't and so it's just really cool because it it was exactly what I needed to hear and God knew I needed to hear it and so it, it was just amazing I had a really fun night and um I'm very glad that it's over because it was exhausting I got home at like 2 30 in the morning and the next day I did not get out of bed I got up really early because I had to take care of our animals but I was in bed all day long. I ate all three meals in bed plus a couple of snacks. I watched movies and TV shows all day long and took naps. And I did not brush my hair until right before my husband got home because I didn't want him to see that my hair was completely like matted. Um, I mean, I didn't lie to him and tell him I was like busy all day or anything, but I definitely didn't want him seeing me with like one big weird dreadlock thing. 
so I decided to brush my hair. But um, yeah, it was exhausting, but it was really worth it. And I hope that people got things out of it. I hope people like made new friends or you know had just a fun night and got to make a new memory on top of an old memory or whatever. I don't know what's gonna come out of it and it doesn't matter because it's not up to me, but um, I'm glad that I did it and I want to do it again. I will tweak a few things next year and, and I'll keep kind of tweaking it year by year until we get it the way I think it's supposed to be but overall I'm very thankful for how it turned out and I'm so thankful for all of you who helped share and helped ask businesses for donations and showed up early to help us set up and stayed late to help us tear down and all of that I'm just really thankful I could not have done it without all of you and I have a few more things to do to to finalize it like I have the biggest wad of black tablecloths you could ever possibly imagine in my hallway and I need to wash all those <laughs> and take them back to people I borrowed them from and I have a bunch of boxes in my garage that I still need to return to people who let us like borrow the decorations but um anyways overall it was awesome and I'm excited that I did it and I'm really thankful for all of your help and um, for those of you who gave your testimonies that night Chris I see you on here that was awesome and I think I saw Amber on here. Amber also gave her testimony, so that was cool. And you know, that's really what it's all about is for us to be able to take those opportunities and testify what the Lord has done and testify what the Lord can do in other people's lives who are stuck the way we used to be. And so anyways, it was just an amazing night and I'm excited and um, the pictures turned out great. And if you have any really cool pictures that you want to send to us, like message us through Facebook and you know, send us 20 pictures or 10 pictures or whatever, because we would love to be able to use them to advertise for next year. So um, anyways, so speaking of next year, um, or this year, I should say, um, you know, as I was coming into this new year, I actually had a conversation with my husband. It was like two nights or so before the um, masquerade, so before, you know, the new year. And my husband was having a conversation with me and my daughter, and he was saying like, so tell me about the highlights from 2019. Like, let's just talk about that. And it was almost like we were doing like a praise walk, only we were sitting on the couches. And as he asked that, I really struggled coming up with positive highlights from the year. Like I had a couple that I could think of, but it's almost like everyone that I thought of, there was something negative attached to it. And I was like, man, what is wrong with me? I was having this whole like inner dialogue. And, and I just, I was like, you know what? I, I got to keep it real. 2019 sucked <laughs> overall. It, it was hard for me. I had a lot of things happen in 2019 that made my life very difficult. Um, there was a lot of mostly like in my family, um, it, it was hard for me. <laughs> and so, um, oops, speaking of family, somebody's calling me. It's like, I'll have to call you back. Um, anyways, I, um, I had a really hard time in 2019 and, Part of that was different things that my family was going through and I was worried about them or I was trying to help them. And it's always hard for me to just keep going and, and keep a smile on my face when my family is struggling. And so that was really difficult for me. And it was quite a few of my family members, quite a few times all throughout the year. And so it was like, oh yeah, you know, wow, it was so awesome when Jordan, you know, uh, graduated from rehab. I was like, "Woo, he's going to do it. Let's do this. Yeah. And then a couple of weeks later, he backslid. And then, a you know, a couple, you know, months later he was in jail, you know, that, so that's just one tiny, tiny thing that happened this year. And, um, that type of thing happened over and over and over again in 2019. So yes, there was a lot of things that happened that were good. Like, hey, I authored two more books. Woo, that's cool. Hey, the Purely His Binds really got up to, off to a good start and I didn't even do anything. Like God just actually started these Purely His Binds 
you know, started all over Medford. Now there's like four or five of them and I had nothing to do with it. It's like, wow, God, that is, that's really cool. So there's like all these things that really did happen that were good. But for some reason that night when he asked me, I was like, ah, oh, I'm struggling. I am just very thankful that 2019 is over. I'm like, peace out 2019. <laughs> like, bye Felicia. I don't want anything more to do with 2019. I'm glad it's over. And I'm so glad that we are in the year 2020 now. And that's not normally how I operate. Um, that's how I operated in my past because a lot of bad things happened you know, in my past. So I'd be like, oh, I just can't wait to this, for this year to be over. And, and I just want to be on to the next thing. I just we need a new start. I need a new beginning. I need, you know, I need a do over. But I'm not typically accustomed to living like that anymore. I really do try to live in the moment, even though I'm a visionary. So I tend to think out in the future. Um, but Man, this year was rough. Keeping it real, it was rough. And I don't know if anybody else had a rough year, but I, looking back over 2019, I can give you quite the list of things that happened that were very hard on me and very hard on my family. And so, you know, one of those things is that um, I really believed that God was going to release Matt from his job in January and he was going to be able to go full time with me and that didn't happen and that what I realized is that really set the tone for my year um, I was really discouraged and I was disappointed that I didn't get my way or that I that the the thought that I had that was going to come to pass didn't actually happen and I I knew I was upset at the time and I went a few more months and and then I knew I got upset about it again, but I didn't really realize it until that night when my husband asked a question like, hey, let's talk about all the good things that happened in this year. Well, that was a real punch to my gut that it didn't happen. I really wanted that. And I had been praying for like five years ish for that to happen and it didn't. So I realized that night when he had asked me that point blank question, I realized that I, I was a little stuck. I felt um, let down by the Lord and I needed to get unstuck. And I am, um, I'm still a little tiny bit stuck. So I have been talking to God about that. But, um, but that was, that was just a hard one for me to swallow. And I know that eventually it's going to happen, but it didn't happen. It wasn't just like I set this goal. Like I thought that I had all these confirmations that were, that were pointing to that. So I don't know what really happened behind the scenes as far as like in the spiritual realm and, and whatever is like happening that the Lord is like planning stuff. I don't really know, but I just know that I got let down. And that kind of just set the tone. And so again, there was just like, boom, 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 one thing after another that was just hard on me this year. And it was hard to not quit. It was hard to not run away. It was hard to not like act out or to um, stay discouraged or to stay mad. I had to really fight for my faith this year. And um, I really looked forward to 2020 and just really getting a fresh start. And one of the things that I wanted a fresh start in is I was like, Lord, I really want to live all in with you. I want to return to the faith that I had when I was in rehab. I want to return to the relationship I had with Jesus when I was in rehab. I want to really fight for that relationship. I want to fight for that closeness and that um that childlike faith because my faith got really tested this last year like it was it was rough um so I I just really want to fight for my relationship with Jesus fight for that for that childlike faith and really just um fight for that closeness that I have had with him and not let certain things like get in the way and so you know, me starting out this new year, I, I've always loved New Year's. I love New Year's. I love my birthday. I love Mondays. And I love the first of every month because those are all like do-overs. And so um, anyways, 
I don't know about you and how you feel about stuff like that, but the other thing that gives us a do-over, the other thing that gives us a fresh start is forgiveness. And so I know that I need to take this another step further and I need to totally forgive God for letting me down, even though I know he has the good a good reason for it or maybe with somebody else who isn't being obedient to lord and that's why it didn't happen i don't really know i don't know the reasons i don't claim to know the reasons it doesn't matter but i i do know that i need to clear the air with the lord like he already knows i'm struggling with um what i you know perceived as like his lack of provision and um, so I, I just need to like fully forgive him so that I can have that fresh start with him, so I can have that do-over, that new beginning, and so that nothing will be in the way of my relationship with Jesus because I really need him. I need him to get through this life. Like, you know, I need him to, to move the mountains in my family that I need him to move. And, and that all happens through relationship. And, you know, our, our ministry is all about going all in with Jesus and getting unstuck from anything in the way of that. Well, I'm no different just because I teach this stuff doesn't mean that I am any different. And I have gone all in with Jesus probably 80,000 times in the last 13 and a half years. I mean, it is a, a common thing that I do. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what my 2020 is going to look like. It's going to look like being just like that girl who loves Jesus and and does stuff for Jesus and you know I want to be about my father's business but I want to do it from a just a real relationship with Jesus and that is something that I got a little bit away from this year and I know now I don't know why it took me a darn year to figure it out but I know now that part of why I was feeling distant from him is because I felt let down by him and so um yeah, I can feel it coming on and I probably just need to get unstuck on this live right now because it's, uh, yeah, I can't, I can't go into this new year dragging baggage. Like I really want to cut that baggage loose and I don't want to have anything holding me back. Not discouragement, not disappointment, not unforgiveness, not bitterness, um, not sadness, not regret. I mean, why, why, you know tug that stuff along why not just like cut that stuff loose and be free in this new year because that's that's what's really important is is living living that free life like uninhibited with the lord so that we can do every single thing that we need to do with him like i'm on mission i'm literally in this world on mission you know commissioned by the lord to do his work and so I just have to, I gotta do what I gotta do. I'm gonna read these comments here really fast. I saw Sean on there. Sean, I miss you. We seriously need to uh, get together. I almost called you today, but uh, you need to text my phone because your number did not transfer into my new phone. So text my phone. Uh, oh, thanks, Sandy. Sandy, you're such an encourager. Ah, good one, Cam. <laughs> Cammy said, Mary and Martha were upset that Jesus showed up late too. Yep. <laughs> but you know what's crazy? Something that I keep thinking about, and I remember that that video you sent me, Cammy. That was really good. I think I, we actually watched that together in my living room. But um, one of the things that I keep thinking about is back when I was still single and I was waiting to you know meet the guy i actually felt released to date two years before i met matt and i remember going god why what is wrong with me why aren't you giving me a guy like i've repented from everything i have forgiven everyone i've surrendered everything i'm totally all in with you like what else do you want from me what else do i need to do you know are you just not gonna give me a husband i don't understand like i'm i'm really doing everything that i can and anyways, fast forward. So I'm dating Matt. We, it was either right before we got married or right after we got married. But we were hiking and we were actually walking down Roxy Ann, which is like this big hill, mountain thing. It's more like a hill, steep one, um, in Medford. And we're walking down it and he started telling me how the Lord was telling him 
that he was not supposed to be in this certain relationship and he was telling him he needed to get out of that relationship and he didn't. And he went from that relationship to another relationship that again, the Lord was saying, this is not the relationship for you. Get out of it. And he wouldn't. And so he was telling me this as we're walking down and I turned around to him. And I was like, it was you. What? And he's like, what? And I'm like, it was your fault. I thought something was wrong with me. I thought I was doing something wrong. I thought that, that I needed to do more stuff and that God was saying, sorry, you just haven't met that bar yet. And I, I thought it was me. And this whole time it was you, you were the disobedient one. Like, dude, I could have been with you two years prior to when we actually were together, had you been obedient to the Lord. And so that that conversation has has come back to my mind in the last like couple of weeks. And I'm wondering if someone's not being obedient to the Lord. I don't know who. I'm not saying it's Matt or am I? No, no, I'm not. I don't know who it is, but, but I, I'm wondering if that's why God keeps bringing that conversation back to my mind just to like comfort me. Like, it's not you. You're not doing anything wrong, Michelle. It's actually somebody else that's not being obedient. I'm waiting for someone else to be obedient to me. And then I'm going to release you in the way that you have envisioned. And so, um, so I think that's probably why the Lord has been bringing that back to my memory because it is so important. Like God, God is waiting on certain like chess pieces, you know, and, but, but we're the chess pieces. We're the ones, we're the body of Christ. And it takes all of us to pull off, you know, these huge missions that God calls us to like purely his is a discipleship movement. It's a discipleship movement. That's going to cross, you know, over oceans. It's going to cross into other countries and, and the only way that it can do that is if people are actually being obedient to him. And so if they're not, it's it's kind of like, well, he's waiting. You know, we're waiting on God, but he's actually waiting on us. So, um, you know, I know that I'm going to do my part. I'm going to be obedient to the Lord. I'm, I'm going to keep saying yes to him. I'm going to forgive him. I'm going to continue to go all in with him. I'm going to return to my first love and I am going to be about my father's business. And so for those of you who feel called to this ministry, I would encourage you also to make sure you're all in with Jesus and be obedient to the call that he has on your life. And so if, um, if he's been asking you to do something and you have been slow to be obedient, I would encourage you to knock it off <laughs> because he needs you and we need you. And, um, I had no clue I was going here tonight, but here I am. So, um, anyways, if we're all being obedient to those of us who are like, you know, part of this purely his family or just part of the family of God. Like if we're all being obedient in our own little towns, in our own little houses, in our own personal lives, if we're being obedient, like man, God can really, really use us way more than what we are being used. And so um, I would encourage you to return to your first love too, like I am, and, and, say yes to him. Like whatever it is that he's calling you to do, say yes to him. If he's asking you to cut something loose, if he's asking you to knock something off, if he's asking you to volunteer in this way or that way, if he's asking you to give in this way or that way, stop making excuses. Stop staying in that relationship that you know darn well you're not supposed to be in. You know, just be obedient to him when he puts it on your heart. Hey, I need you to stop that. Or somebody else is calling you out. You got other believers calling you out. You know, listen to them. Be obedient and watch the blessings flow. It is, um, it's amazing to live like in that sweet spot with God to be like, this is what I was made for. Like, oh, I'm so effective doing what I'm doing when I do this. Like, I still remember the very first time I ever said that. And that was when I was in rehab and we had done something called hitting the streets. And that was when we would take like a van of people who were like in the rehab. We'd go downtown, all prayed up. We would fast, we would pray, all this stuff. And we would go downtown and we would get out of the van. We would always leave a couple of seats empty just in case somebody wanted to come back with us but we would get out of the car and we would go around and we would pray for people like homeless people prostitutes drug dealers drug addicts you know just anyone who's out lurking at night 
And I remember as we're getting ready to do it, we, we were like just praying out loud. I was with this little group and all of a sudden I got this rush inside of me. I felt like this adrenaline rush come up inside of me and I like raised my hands. I was like, Oh my gosh, this is what I was made for. Oh my gosh, this is awesome. I was so, I felt so like in my element and and so excited and just like I felt so privileged that I got to get out there and do that and and that was the first time I ever felt that that I actually was doing what I was called to do right when I was called to do it and that that the Lord was like so proud of me I was being obedient even though it was like a scary thing like you know going up to people who are like literally in sleeping bags on the sidewalk, you know, just things like that. But man, I really felt to the presence of the Lord and I felt like favor on my life and I was excited about what I was doing. And, um, yeah. And that comes just from obedience. Had I never gone to rehab, I would have never felt that. I would have never gotten that experience. And, you know, and had I said like, Ooh, I don't want to go downtown and talk to homeless people. Like, Oh, I don't, I don't want to talk to drug dealers. I'm too afraid of that. I want to avoid that. If I hadn't have said yes, I would not have experienced that feeling. And it was an awesome feeling. And so I don't know what you have been avoiding being obedient at, but you'll feel so much better if you actually just do it. So I'm going to just do it. I'm going to do it right now. And so, um, like I said, God put it on my heart, whatever it was five days ago or whatever, my days are all messed up. Um, that I was upset with him, that I was discouraged and I was, I was disappointed by him not coming through. So I am going to forgive God right now so that I can move forward and I'm going to forgive whoever else is uh, being disobedient that's holding up my calling, the fullness of my calling, which is different. Um, and so, yeah, so I'm going to do it. So you can do it with me. If you guys have been upset with the Lord or anybody else, feel free to like pray right alongside of me. Um, it's not like God doesn't know. It's not like he doesn't know. So whatever, I'm just going to do it and um and if you've been upset with him too, I encourage you to forgive him also and really get a fresh start with him so that you can return to your first love and so that uh, you can go into this new year with a clean slate and actually have the power of God really residing in you without any hindrances. So um, here we go. Let's do this. <laughs> All right, well, Lord Jesus, I just um, I just want to come before you, God, and you already know what I'm upset about because you're the one who put it on Matt's heart to even ask that question, and you knew I was going to know the answer as soon as he asked, and so uh, I'm just like mad at you, God, that you didn't come through because I really thought... I really thought you were going to release Matt from his job on in January, Lord, and it didn't happen. And I told a bunch of people and I really believed it and I had a lot of faith and, and it didn't matter because it didn't happen. And so it's been a struggle like financially since then. And it makes me feel guilty that, that I don't make enough, Lord. And um, it makes me feel guilty that Matt has worked so many hours and so much overtime, Lord. And just been blaming you for it God because I don't understand I don't know why you're withholding something that is good especially when somebody wants to serve you full time but it's also dawning on me Lord that that uh it might be somebody else it might not it might be Matt that is not being obedient or it might be somebody else that you've been putting something on their heart and they haven't like like helped or whatever I don't know what it is Lord but you do and so I just surrender like all of the unknowns. Lord, I surrender what I don't see. And I just give you like all of my anger right now. Lord, I give you my disappointment. I give you my discouragement. I gave you the feeling of like it just being let down. And I just give you the vision of it, God. And I give you the timeline because now I feel like it's a year late when it's probably not. Maybe it's this January or maybe it's next January. I don't know. So I just give you the timeline. And, um, and Lord, I just forgive you. I just 
release you, Lord, from anything that I've been holding against you, Lord. And I just unhook all that stuff from me and I hook it to you, God. I just don't want that baggage, Lord, coming behind me. And I don't want the enemy, the enemy to be able to use it, Lord, as a foothold in any way. And so I just bind the enemy right now and command him to leave in Jesus' name, Lord. And I just ask God that you would just remove any, like, any spaces between me and you, Lord. I just ask God that you would just remove that right now, Lord. And I thank you, God, that you say that those who join themselves with Christ are one with him in spirit, God. And so I thank you that there's not really any space anyways, Lord. But I don't want there to be just, like, space in my heart, God. And so, Lord, I just... I just totally forgive you for not coming through on my stupid timeline. And um, Lord, I just forgive whoever else, Lord, is not being obedient to you, Lord. Just forgive, I forgive them, Lord. And I don't even know who they are, so I just see empty faces in my head, Lord. So whoever it is, Lord, that is not being obedient to you, God, I just forgive them right now, Lord, and I just give them to you, and I ask God that you would move on their heart, Lord, to to do what you're asking them to do, so they can feel what I have felt, Lord, when I was out there hitting the streets, and, and just knowing I was doing what I was called to do, Lord, and so I just thank you that we all have a different calling, and if we all work together, Lord, we can really just pull off the vision that you have, Lord, and for just this world in general, not just purely his, just in general, Lord. And so, God, I just pray that you would um, help me to not feel so burdened and just help me to feel light. And I pray for new, fresh vision going forward and that I would not be hindered by what didn't happen um, last January or any other time throughout this last year or at the unmasquerade or anything, Lord, I just pray that you would help me to celebrate the victories and move forward. I pray for fresh vision and, um, and that you would just align me with the right people, Lord, at the right time. And, um, I just thank you, Lord. I thank you for everything that you've already done, everything you're going to do. And I just pray for everyone who is watching this live right now, Lord, if they're mad at you, God. And I know this probably seems like such a small thing to be mad at you for, but other people have way bigger things that they're mad at you for. And I just pray that you would show them, God, that um, that you can handle it. And so that you would rather have a good relationship with them and not have anything in the way of that. So, Lord, we just thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm sure I'm going to have black all over my face maybe not Woo, not bad okay so whew, there's my life <sighs> so I can tell that it was real part of the way that I can tell that it was real is how I can like actually take a deep breath and push it all the way out because when I hold unforgiveness I have a hard, hard time like breathing all the way out because I usually like almost like hold my breath and clench my jaw and um, yeah. So um, that's that. Oh, I didn't see all these like coming up. So for people who are just joining, they're like, whoa, what in the world am I just joining? Uh yeah, so um, I just forgave God for those of you who are just joining. I was upset with him. I felt discouraged and let down by him. And I, I kind of knew it. I kind of knew it sporadically throughout the last year, but I didn't really fully knew it until like five days ago or something when my husband asked me a question. So I just decided to pray that out because I could feel the weight of it and it was holding me back. And I don't want anything holding me back from my life. I don't want anything holding me back from my calling, holding me back from loving the Lord or loving people. And so um, it's like I'm cutting everything off that is like, I'm, I'm, I'm throwing everything off that is holding me back. Like it doesn't belong in my life. I don't, I don't want to live like that. And so um, it was, it was really bothering me. So for those of you who just joined us, you might have to watch the replay and know what I was talking about. But anyways, I am excited about this new year. I'm excited about the things that I want to accomplish. Um, I want to make some changes. There's things in my life that aren't working. Um, and I want to find ways to either make them work or cut them loose. So, um, so that's part of what I'm doing. And I'm just taking these next couple of weeks to really like 
look through those things and really talk about it with the Lord. And I think that it'll be a little easier for me now because I don't have this thing in between me and him that I put there. He didn't do it, but I put a little barrier there. And so um, with that gone now, I can really like probably hear him better and I'll probably hear him with a little bit of a different tone of voice. Um, so yeah, and I'm sure my voice will, my tone of voice will change too because I won't be so upset. Sandy says, someone in Matt's work is holding back something that is keeping Matt in his job. God has cut it with an ax and your family is being delivered in the name of Jesus. That would be really awesome. <laughs> that would be awesome. It's hard. Like, um, so my husband normally works 10 hour shifts, but he, um, but he has been working 12 hour shifts. Well, the other night he was supposed to be off at seven o'clock, which was his 12 hour shift. And he ended up having to work until like 1130 at night and didn't get home until 1215. So it's like, it's that kind of stuff. And it's really hard on him you know, on his body, on his mind, his emotions, like everything, it's really hard on him, which makes that hard on me. So I, you know, he doesn't want to just like quit and retire and get a lazy boy and get an RV and travel around. He literally wants to join me in ministry. Like he loves, um, you know, leading groups. He loves like going with me to speaking engagements. He doesn't like to speak, but he likes to go with me, you know, things like that. And that's only one thing. That's just my personal life. That's just whatever. So, um, there, yeah, so it's, uh, yeah, it's been hard. So anyways, and I, I would like for his faith to be built too, to show him like, no, God really can do it. Like he can really do it. Watch. So yeah, he will eventually. <laughs> Thanks, Shannon. Yeah, I wasn't expecting to do this tonight. I literally was just going to talk about like out with the old, in with the new, fresh start, new beginning, you know, new year, new you. That's where I was going tonight. But God was like, yeah, no, you're mad. Forgive me. Move on with this stuff. Show them how it's done because there's a lot of people who are going to be watching who are mad at me too. So just handle your business and move on with it. So yeah, he likes to do that with me and I'm totally okay being used that way to be like, whatever, I'll just show you how it's done. I'm struggling too, so here you go, here's my life. Um, I do like to, I mean, why else do I go through what I go through if I can't use it for the honor and glory of God, if I can't use it as like training, because I don't like doing regular trainings, but I don't mind training like this, because this is discipleship, this is mentoring, and and so, um, yeah, so it, it's not hard for me to to be real in front of other people. It might be hard right at first when the tears really start dropping because that's where it's like most like, oh, this is my the real me. This is my inner self. Not that I like wear a mask or anything, but you know what I'm saying. It's just a really vulnerable place. So um, anyways, I just saw my, my husband just texted, said something like, I just saw a brief part of your life. That's all I saw. I'm like, whoops, I don't know. Like, maybe I said too much. <laughs> No, it'll be fine. He's probably going to be like, why were you crying? Are you okay? What's happening? <laughs> I have to explain that to him later. I'm like, watch the replay with everyone else. Anyways, um, yeah, so thank you everyone for like tuning in. Thank you for all of your kind words and your encouragement. And I know so many of you pray for me and pray for our family and pray for this ministry. I know so many of you are volunteering as as group leaders and and you're spreading the word and you help us share different things and it's it's just awesome. So anyways, I am excited to be a part of just the family of God and and to know I have so many sisters and brothers out there from all over the place. So um, yeah, it's kind of fun getting on these Friday Night Lives. One thing I wanted to ask, something that I've been considering is doing these later Um maybe still on Friday nights or maybe a different night, but doing it later because I know a lot of people are like just now, like, I don't even know what time it is, but like just now like getting off work. And so some people have said like, ah, I can never catch you live because I'm always working at that time. So if you think this should be later and even on a different night, can you please give me some feedback on that? Because um, I, I would like to know. So I can make myself free later at night or I can do them earlier. It doesn't really matter. But I do want to keep doing these once a week because I think they're 
I think they're helpful. So I think that people get stuff out of it. And so I would like to keep offering this. So anyways, um, I'm going to let you guys go now. So thank you for tuning in. And um, yeah, I am excited for this new year. I'm probably going to be way more excited now that I just <gasps> dropped all those bags right here. So now that I'm unstuck, I will probably have a different outlook. So anyways, you guys are awesome. And I'm excited to see where God's going to take us all. All right. I will see you guys later. And uh, if you can, if you think this is helpful uh, or somebody you know that needs to forgive God, feel free to share this with them. You can share it like on your page or you can share it like in a private message or whatever. So anyways, talk to you guys later. Bye.